Greetings and welcome to Flavor Fleet. Today we have an interesting first, a virtual show all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa. Joining me today is my aunt Kogi, taking me through a nostalgic journey many, many, many years ago, joining her mom in making this very special dish. And I will leave it to her to give us, but take me more onto this nostalgic trip. Kogi, welcome and namaste. I'm sure I appreciate you inviting me to this um, uh, video to this chat and to this recording. It's going to give me pleasure to introduce this dish from many, many years ago. Um, I'm Kogi Pillay and uh, I'm from Midrand, South Africa. We have been living in a place called Stanger, far down in the north coast, KZN. And that's where we had the appreciation for making such a dish. My mum, her name is Rajma. She will be ever remembered by making this beautiful dish. Oh, yes. I would like to honor her and show you what this menu is all about. Okay, we are doing a very, very, very simple Indian dish, which we are calling a delicacy at this time. I will let Kogi to get started with the process, and as she's starting it, we'll get chatting more about our experiences together. Uh, with this particular dish, taking us to our roots and ancestral background. If Kogi wants to start with what we call a mili rice kichidi. This is what the um, mili rice is. It's grainy. It's actually crushed from uh, corn. Crushed from maize. From corn. So what it, milis is a little bit harder than corn. So right. uh, when this dries up, then it's crushed and it's used. It's actually very, very good because it's uh, it's starch yes it's very high in starch it was ideal for our ancestors who originally worked in the uh, sugarcane plantation and it was uh, a food that we uh, could um, afford so i don't know whether this is noticeable and i know kogi tried to show you also what we call mini rice but i believe in this place it's called cause grits g-r-i-t-s oh um Hominy is a little thicker version that uh, in South Africa we make samples. I don't know what we make with here. Uh, so yes, as I said, this is this very simple um, grain is taking the place of rice when we didn't have as many rice at, in the very early days. So this were poor that would cook this more than anybody else. But today everybody wants to have a, a taste of it. So with that, can we get started again? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Today, everybody wants to cook this, hence it become a de delicacy in the, in, the, in the South African diet. Then we, add, then we have, for this particular dish, kichiri, we have dal, or many of us may call it dal. Um, mm, in South Africa, we call it dal dal. Texture. It's okay. actually cut peas. Split peas, yes. So I think you have the soap. Is that soaked already? Not yet. It's still at the right. raw form. I have some here also. Uh, to just to make to let you know that it's all available in, in the US too. So Kogi is doing this in Gauteng and I'm doing this in Massachusetts, Acton, Massachusetts. And uh, this uh, split piece is available easily. But moong dal is especially at mainly at uh, specific shops. So we can get this at any retailer, more or less. So it's it's a slightly cheaper. Any uh, supermarket, yeah. And therefore, we use this dough. What one has to do is pre-soak the mealy rice for at least two hours. So what I have done, I've taken two cups and put it in water and let it soak for two hours. So I took one and a half cups, standard cups, of the pea dal. Also soaked it for two hours. Say it's about. I would say five or six quarts. Five or six. Okay, I'm going to pour the oil in. It's about a quarter cup of oil. Just to cover the base of your pot, right? Just the base, just the base of the pot, like such. See that? Mm -hmm. You want to add a bit of olive oil? You want to get olive oil too? 
I'm sure mom didn't do that. That's your new uh, addition. Yes, yes. sunflower oil. Keeps it a bit soft. Oh. Tell you this, we have a husband's niece and her husband on a wine farm. Mm -hmm. An olive, olive plantation in Toba, oh, Cape Town. Nice. So they make, this is a virgin olive oil, which they make and export. Oh, nice. So that's how they got about doing this, and and it's really, really a very good oil. And I wish you guys could get it in America. Let's try. Maybe they can export. Maybe they are exporting. Let it. Let us know, and we put it on our website. If they are, we'll do that definitely. Yes. So then we'll sauté the onion. Okay. The baked rice is pre-cooked also. Note that it's 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 still a little bit watery because you're gonna add water anyway. Yeah. yeah. And then. Um, Right, right, okay. So this is also like 10 minutes or so? 15 minutes? How long did you cook that for? One, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. So the dal until it's three quarter cooked and the minute it's about 10 minutes. Uh, bear in mind, I added uh, turmeric to this. Right, you can see here. Okay, so you had the white type that I just showed earlier on and you showed too and then you added some, like a teaspoon of turmeric to two cups of um And, and you let it, uh, all the liquid to be absorbed or did you strain it? Two cups, okay. I only have this 500. I'll put two jugs of water. Okay. So there's one cup of water. There's about 30 so ounces of flour water. Cups of uh, mealy rice, okay. at least I would reckon about two liters. This, this is on step one, on the first step of the body. Okay, that's the uh, pre cooking is concerned, the yeah. preparation. Then I, I have chopped onion. Finely right. chopped onion. Mm -hmm. and I will add that to hot oil. The onion is about a cupful. It's basically uh, one or two onions, two medium sized onions. Okay. Then we start adding all the other little bits and pieces of spices, which is the dry chili. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can see the dry chilies. I see it above your pot. Then we got our jeera. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cumin seeds. Cumin seeds. Uh, I would just add a little more because we like jeera here. Yeah? Right. The rest calls for however much you want to use. Depends on your like and your taste. And I'll use four cinnamon stick you're using. This is a cumin. Cinnamon stick. There's four, there's four cloves here. Yeah? Four cloves. Regular cloves. Black cloves. A brown cloves. And I will add cardamom. Okay. Right. Cardamom. Ashi, cardamom. Yes. Curry leaves. Or bay leaves. Bay leaves. Okay. Are right, you adding two bay leaves? Yeah. The, the, if you have big ones, and it's two, but these are from my tree, so it's small. I, just... I was going to ask, do you have a bay leaf tree? Yeah. I, I know many people in Johannesburg have bay leaves in the tree. I have babies, curry leaves, onion, coriander, nice. cilantro, yeah. chilies, all kinds of chilies. But it's good to have a garden. Very, very, very good. Very good to have a garden. Thought I would cook along with you, so I, I got my curry leaf for my garden. I also, oh, you do? Yeah? Yeah, that's oh, it. These are curry leaves. Oh, okay. You can have an abundance. I have a small tree, so I'm being very mean, but it still gives off the flavor. <laughs> The, and this is, I just use one stem. Okay, yes, that's what I thought. That would be more than enough. <laughs> yes. That's, that's what I've done here now. I've added all the spices. Mm -hmm. uh, I just let the onion go a little bit uh, brown because I don't like it crunchy. I just get okay. a little bit brown. Yes, you want to get translucent a little bit, right? Uh, exactly, exactly. So I've done the, uh, yeah, and then I add. Uh, if you tilt your pot towards the camera, we'll be able to see how translucent it is. Like so now we see inside your pot very nicely. As soon as, as, soon as it's uh, ready, I'll show it to you again. Yes, it's, it's, it's almost ready. I can see that. That's correct. Then I, then I have um, cinnamon. Mm -hmm. I think it's cassia. Cinnamon stick, yes. Ceylon cinnamon. Pure cinnamon. Okay. Cinnamon sticks, yes. The cinnamon bark, we call them, right? The bark is not nice. It's very and it feels like sand in your mouth. Ah, okay. I didn't look at the difference. 
the older you get, the wiser you are, right? <laughs> And you learn a lot from my, I learn a lot from my nieces actually, they're always cooking. Yeah. Here we are, we're ready with the onions. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can see that. We're ready with the onions. And all I do is just add a bit of, um, a little bit, just the rice is yellow enough. The dal hasn't, uh, I didn't put any turmeric in the dal. Right. So for that reason, I just put about half a teaspoon of um, turmeric. So this is a kitchen operation, as you can tell, she's not using proper measuring cups, measuring spoons, but just remember, whatever you use with the measuring, whatever you start off, whether you use a big mug or a little cup, one is one, two is two. I would use this, uh, this comes with a rice cooker, so I use this one. So this is not actually a cup full, but if I start with this one, then I would use everything accordingly. But if I use a measuring cup, which is uh, in South Africa, 250 milliliters, in the US it's 240, again, one and one and one, or two and two, whatever. The measuring cup or the, the utensils you use must be consistent. And it will all work, always, whether it's baking or cooking. And the one good thing about cooking is it uh, is forgiving. You don't have to add half a uh, milliliter this or half a centimeter that or half a teaspoon. It can just work. Just use your discretion. Intuition. Especially with curries. You and I cook with intuition, right? You showing us something? What the egg? Dal. Your pot is shining, huh? Your mother is very proud of you. <laughs> then I'm just going to add the mealy rice. Okay. No. But it looks like you might have cooked it a little while ago, so it's uh, if you cooked it immediately, it'll be a little more soft, right? Fortunately, it, it didn't get lumpy because sometimes it can get lumpy. Yes, it yes. Had enough. It knew what its uh, what its intention was for today, so it kept good. It was well behaved. The mini rice was well behaved. Okay. Or the rough grits. So what I'm going to do now is for the next 15 minutes. I'm just going to add salt when you boiling the mealy rice and the dal. Or you could add salt when you braised it. Right. What I did. So uh, I know I added little when I did that par, uh, par boiling of this. So I'm just going to add a little bit of salt, just about half a teaspoon. Right. Okay. This is quite. This is a teaspoon for tea. It's really not. <laughs> A measuring spoon. So that's what I'll just add and I'll just give it another mix. I don't want to mix it too much. This is an interesting like fact. Pea dal cooks uh, quicker without salt so it may do you good to add the salt later. I'm just saying my audience. But the rice it's nice to put the salt in so it absorbs the flavor even better from the beginning. That's my take on that. Because he also Add salt very late in when he, when he does some cooking. Works. So, and I'm very impatient, so the salt and everything goes in at one time. So, we don't have that. When you're, uh, when you're a working mom, you want everything to go fast. Are you adding two cups of boiling water? Yeah, this is boiled water. Okay, uh, okay I took it out a while ago, it's now it's hot. So, I'm just going to pour it in. Mm -hmm. or, Okay, this one. 250 mils. One cup or eight ounces. Yeah, one cup. South Africa uses different measures and the US uses different measures, so hence I'm changing it for you. I, I learned to adapt very easily the two countries. Oh, well, fantastic. You've had uh, knowledge of South Africa and you have. <laughs> you're doing in America now and it helps a great deal because if we share recipes then it's yes. easy to convert. Yes. Yes. So do you want to show that in the camera again how what it looks like and you lift it up a little bit we can see a little bit of the rice but if you can lift it up a little bit so you, you didn't quite cover it you just uh, it's just uh, the level of the rice. I can see it pretty clearly. Thank you. So now you have will, it'll still be nice and soft. Okay. But it also depends on the heat when you're cooking because it depends on the plate you're putting it on, the size of the pot, all that I'm sure you know. Yes. So, 
Now I may have to add a little water, I'm not sure. But that will be at, towards the end of the cook. Okay. So then I'm going to add the butter. Ah. Everybody's yummy. Yes. You're not adding ghee, you're adding butter. Just butter. Um, I don't have ghee because of the shops being closed. Uh, so I just have to mention, this is our lockdown. During our yes. lockdown, we're having some fun. Absolutely. So here we are. I just leave the butter on, heats through, melts through, and then I give it to mix to see the consistency. And mm -hmm. we should be there in about 10 minutes time. Okay. All right. So in the meantime, you're making a chutney to go with it? I'm going to start preparing the chutney now. And corn was uh, what the Africans used. That was their staple. Uh, uh, our parents and grandparents had uh, adapted and adopted as we went on. And we adapt anywhere we go. Whatever exactly. So yeah, after having it crushed or ground to the texture they wanted it, they would now um, use the, uh, because of rice being uh, short or they couldn't get rice, so they used midi rice to make the kitchen. Right. And it, it wasn't the way we, I did it here, like I braised it and butter and I put curry leaves in the whole works. It was just the basic staple diet with dal and midi rice just boiled together and eaten as a, as a meal. With salt. Yeah, with salt. You made it extravagant today. Right, for the chutney now, I've just added some oil. Just added oil. And then, as uh, soon as that heats through with the blue haze, I'm going to add chilies. The chilies are also from my garden. Ah, oh, nice. Going to, you're going to winter and you still got fresh stuff in your garden. I know it's autumn right now, or what we call fall. The strange thing is that we've had rain and we've had Pleasant weather this time in South Africa. And I'm so surprised that we're having such nice weather. Outside is beautiful. So I'm going to see. I can see through your window. So here we have slipped the green chilies, and these are those old oh, chilies. Yes. They definitely not, uh, it's just for color I add this. Yeah? Yes. Are you guys vegetarian? Yes. So I'm just putting the curry leaves through and not tearing it completely, and just add just for the flavor to come out. Right. So, so far you just added chilies there, right? And it's curry leaves. Yes. Why I do this, I like to fry the chili in the oil because you can the, uh, the strength of the chili will come out in the oil. Right. Yeah, we have had some beautiful weather here and no complaints. The only thing is that uh, well, the, the thing is 35 days of holiday, but it's only indoors, you know? Okay. It looks like a cup, a little more than a cup of onions. That's okay. That's good. So most people add uh, sugar to the uh, chutney. I don't because I add a lot of onions. I added some red onions. Ah, okay. Purple onions, yes. That that makes it sweeter, I think. Yes, yes. The show is going on quite well. The onions are frying quite nicely there. Yes, see? See? While the chili is cooking, I'm going to just take it to show you what's happening with the chili the rice. Right, you can see that. My grandson was here and said, Pongali! <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I also make, a, uh, well, I do different things, but the easy way. Yes. I don't too much of fuss and bother. Electric pots are used. Yes, if any turmeric again to your chutney, to your tomato. Yes. Right. Yeah. There we are. Okay. Let's throw it, uh, there's the tomatoes. Yes. I think the tomatoes are there. You put in time too? Oh. Yes, yes. What one, what one can do as well, you can drain some ginger in here as well. I find ginger chutney tea is better than garlic. Oh, okay. Actually, it helps with you. your face funny here. Ginger is a better of the two uh, ingredients to use. Ginger or garlic, I, ginger is a better one. Oh yeah, I, I like, I can eat a raw ginger just like that. Good, good for you. Remember we live right across the sugarcane? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We 
here we are. I've just got about half a teaspoon of uh, fine salt, but it mm -hmm. should actually be a one teaspoon. And there we are. So how many tomatoes you put there? About jam tomatoes. You use jam tomatoes. It's called Roma tomatoes here. Yes. And did you put well, that over the round of tomatoes? No, we do use round tomatoes as well. I want to prefer for the chutney. I prefer the Roma because it's not so sour. This is the tomatoes. Right. Oh, that's a huge one. Yeah. So I would use about five. Okay. Okay. Now, well, the kitchen might be done also. Is, yeah, kitchen is. Oh, yeah. There you are. It's almost done. It's very low, so I'm going to switch it off. As soon as it, it gets the texture, here we are. So, what would happen? This would now. You've got a great camera person. Thank you. <laughs> as it cools, we're going to find that it's going to get a little bit harder. Okay. Okay. because yeah. of the butter as well, remember? So, yeah. uh, so that's why when you cook kichidi, you must just prepare yourself to just serve supper almost immediately after the kichidi is cooked. Right, right, right. So we can, we, there is alternate ways of making things healthier. Even this, like you said, like do it like our ancestors did. Not even salt, if you don't want to eat salt, just uh, dal and vinegar. Oh, there's a variation. The so one it's uh, very easy, way of preparing it. The other one is with spices. Right. Spices. spices is always good. The good thing about what uh, cumin does, it actually helps in aids in digestion. So what I will do is maybe add a little bit of ginger to that to add to make, because of the sedentary work we're doing, ginger may add a little bit more value to my health system right now. I also and do you add uh, pepper to your turmeric? Because if you add a little bit of pepper to turmeric, it makes it really work in your body. So during this, during this uh, time of this, especially if people are you're trying to fight the virus or you know, people want to avoid the virus or somebody that had the virus already, it's a very good idea to have turmeric and ginger water daily. It actually helps fighting it. It helps to, helps to your body to recover. And there's no harm. No, definitely, definitely. Is this about done? It's almost You're going to have this for dinner tonight. Definitely. This is dinner tonight. Hopefully your family is happy with it. They love it. They love it. Good. <laughs> Not everybody. You either love it or hate it, right? And it's because it's called mealy rice. You know, people will say, I don't like it. I hate it. Especially the older generation because it uh, connects with poverty. Yes, exactly. Those that had really hard times in life that know the true meaning of what that felt to them at that time. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, my relationship with my aunt Kogi, um, uh, my maternal grandmother and her mother were sisters. So hence she's my aunt and very fond memories growing up together. Not together but we visit quite often, right? And when we do, when we are with each other, we don't want to let go. Yes, yes that's there for sure. After all these years, so much of uh, ideas and motivation from you. You're such an inspiration. Thank you. And I the same. So, oh, there you go. Very nice, fresh. But, oh my word, it must be just outside your door. It just came in like a jiffy. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to uh, serve the, the really nice on You're gonna move the pot away so you're gonna have a better use of this. Mm -hmm. Wow, you're really serving well. That would be how my great grandfather might have eaten once upon a time, working in the farm. Yes, and he was a big man. Uh, by, the, by, the time, by the time I got to know my great grandfather, he was quite thin and small, so I go. I'm talking about your grandfather. I have fond memories of him and Kikimba because I did my grade one with him. And he would take very good care of me. So I remember him very well. Do you know what his name was? What was it? Makulusko. Oh, I didn't know that. Makulusko means big. Yeah, uh, and I think Skok means boss or, or someone they like. 
appreciate a picture and if you send it through to me so Kogi thank you so much I'm so grateful for this time together from Yorkton all the way from Midran Gauteng South Africa to, to my kitchen in Acton Massachusetts USA very grateful thank you thank you Kogi thank you for having me I appreciate that and from my kitchen in Midran South Africa Namaste and all the best. Thank you, Auntie Kogi. I'm your host, Hamsha Naidu. Always available at actintv.org or um, YouTube. If you have any comments, write to flavorfuleats at gmail.com. Namaste and thank you, Kogi Auntie. See you soon. Thank you very much, technician. We appreciate you. Our technician is away and uh, same with uh, your daughter too. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye. Welcome to my vegetable garden. You know those lovely chilies I was talking about. I use it in the uh, chutney, and uh, the brinjals are starting to grow. And by the end of this week, we should be having some lovely brinjal for our uh, curries. Then I use also thyme from my garden for the chutney, which is also uh, from. There's more brinjal here. It's like a farm now. And that's my curry leaf tree, my proud, my pride, which I have all these little babies here. The babies need to go because it's eating up all the nourishment of the big curry leaf tree. See? Then we have some lovely chilies here. I also use the chilies from these trees. Bay leaf. So my ba uh, the bay leaf tree actually I trimmed it down and I needed to for it to grow out, but it doesn't look like it grew out in this way, like a gum tree. So yeah, so this is my beautiful garden with a basil. There's my dania, some mint there, and yeah, lots of brinjal. Oh yeah. So yeah, thank you, I'm sure.